Okay, we're back. This is Math 200. We're looking at the review for the um, Chapter 2 test. And, um, oops, i got to turn C3PO on. See if we can go along. And um, we're on number 19, page 5. Page 5. We're going to do 5, 6, and 7. So let's do... Number 19 on page 5. Jocelyn is thinking of a number N and she wants her sister to guess it. Her first clue is that 5 less than 3 times the number is between 1 and 7. Okay, so let's read that again. 5 less than 3 times the number. 5 less than 3 times the number. So that means 3x minus 5. The minus 5 has to come second. You can't put it first. If you say 5 minus 3x, that's incorrect because subtraction and division are not commutative. You can't switch them around and have the same answer. Addition, multiplication, those are commutative. So that one, it doesn't matter which one is first or second. Um, between 1 and 7, inclusive. So inclusive means that includes that number. So there we are. Compound inequality. So now you can forget about all those words and just solve this compound inequality. Remember the trick, you just cover that little piece up. If this were the inequality we're trying to do, we would add 5 to isolate the variable. And then you uncover it and go, oh look, a third side. So all three, it's like working a three-sided equation. So now we got 6 is less than or equal to 3x, less than or equal to 12. And then again, if you cover that up and you just add that, you divide both sides by 3. You divide by 3, you divide by 3, and you divide by 3. And so there's our answer. 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. All right, 20. A chicken farm produces 500,000 eggs per day. Total can vary as many as 25,000 eggs. What's the max? What's the min? Okay, so that's a pretty easy problem then. You don't even probably have to show work on that. The max is you add the 25,000 to the 500,000. So it could be as much as 525,000 eggs. And then the min would be going back to center, back to 500,000, and then taking off 25,000, so 475,000 eggs. And that would be the maximum. All right, use order of operations to simplify. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That means we do parentheses, then exponents, then multiply, divide, then add, subtract. So, a um, couple of things though. Okay, so out of this, we have minus, we have plus, we have times. So we're going to do times first. So we're going to multiply first. So that's 18. But now you've got to be careful because this is a little bit of um, a confusing. Lots of people get this confused. So when you think, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. People then think you always multiply before you divide, you always add before you subtract. That's not true. That's not true at all. Um, we don't say, oh, this is add, so we're going to do that first and get 27 and then do 4 minus 27 and that would be negative 23. That would be wrong. If we did decide to add these two first, it would be negative 9 plus 18, which would just be 9. And then 9 plus 4, that would be 13. That would be correct. So if, if you keep it as a negative, yeah, then you could do it that way. But the add subtract left to right, so we've got negative 5 plus 18, and then 13. So there is no, you don't always add before you subtract, you don't always multiply before you divide. If there's addition and subtraction in both in there, you go left to right. If there's multiplication and division both in there, you go left to right. So you don't always do always multiply before you divide or always add before you subtract, all right? 22, 12x plus 8, that's an expression, but it says evaluate the expression when x is 3. So that's really just another problem like that. It's 12 times 3 plus 8. So we multiply before we add, and then add them up. That's uh, 44. All right. Um, 
23 and 24. Hopefully those are pretty easy. That's just um, combining like terms and then translate and simplify. So 23, 9a squared plus 12 plus 8a squared plus 2. So it's all addition. And this is like term with that. So you put those together, you get 17a squared. Remember, don't change the power. You change the power when you're multiplying numbers. If you're adding up like terms, you just change the coefficients. Just the numbers in front change. But the a stays the same and the squared stays the same. And then um, plus 12 and plus 2 is plus 14. And that's all she wrote. And so be careful. I've had students accidentally treat that like an, an equation where they insert an equal sign and make it zero and write down negative 14 seventeenths, the square root of negative 14 seventeenths or something. It's an expression. Expressions you can just simplify unless they specifically give you a value like they did there. So this is just an expression also, no equals two sign, but they told you sub n x equals three and then we could substitute and simplify. All right, 24, translate uh, the difference of 5x squared and 12xy. Okay, when, the, when you see the difference of, then it is in the order in which it's written. So it's just 5x squared minus 12xy. And that's it. Done. Let's see what 25 looks like. Uh, oh, fill in the blank. Okay, so this one, do yourself a favor. If you're doing the work for this one, the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. 8 is less than 12. So that is a less than sign. Lots of people do this, but then they go back to that and say, oh, yep, that's farther to the left on the number line, and then they make a point towards that. You have to do the actual absolute value before you compare. All right, so let's get 26. We got um, translate and simplify. The sum of 5 and negative 18 increased by 20. Okay, so that's just 5 plus negative 18 increased by just means plus 20. That's it. Negative uh, 13 plus 20 is 7. All right, 27. We got 19 times negative 2 minus 35 divided by 12 minus 7. All right, so again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We're going to do parentheses first. So we're going to leave this alone. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave that alone. Uh, 12 minus 7 is 5. All right, so now it's like a brand new problem. We got multiply here, we got divide there. We'll just go left or right, so we'll do this multiplication first. That's negative 38 minus 35 divided by five. Now, even though the minus is written first, we're doing order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we are gonna divide before we add or subtract. And now we got a negative 38 and a negative 7. That's a negative 45. So that's a tricky one. You've got to, got to kind of fight the urge to just go left to right. The only time you're going left to right is if it's a tie between like addition and subtraction or between multiplication and division. Otherwise, you follow this order. Parentheses first. Exponents next, there were no exponents anywhere. Multiply, divide, so we did the multiplication, then we did the division, and then add, subtract last. All right, 28, 5m minus 3n minus 8, when m is 15 and n is 3. Okay, so just subbing in 
15 and 3. And now you're doing order of operations. So I'm going to multiply. And let's see, what is that? 75 minus 3 times 3 minus 8. 75 minus 9 minus 8. 75 minus 9 is... What is that? 66 minus 8, and then 66 minus 8 is 58. There we go. And then uh, multiply. Okay, so this one, 10 17ths times 15 70 fifths. So there's a couple of ways to attack this. You just do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom and then reduce. But I don't think that's the way to go about it. I think that would be hard. You're going to get really large numbers. You're going to get 150 on the top and um, a really ugly large number on the bottom. And it won't jump out at you what to do. So what you might want to do here is look for common terms like cancel, cancel. So not cross multiply, don't use the word cross. Don't say cross cancel, say just cancel. We're canceling, meaning we're reducing the fraction before we actually multiply it. That's all we're doing. We're just um, getting it reduced. So look, if this is two times five, right? And this is three times five times five, right? Three times 25, then we could cancel fives off there. This is 3 times 5, that's 3 times 5. So that 3 and 5 cancel. And so now look, this is basically just a 1. This is just a 1. 17 times 1 is 17. 2 times 1 is 2. That's the way to go about it. I think that's much easier than multiplying straight across and then trying to reduce it like one step at a time. Okay, let's do the last page, page seven. We've got uh, number 30 is negative 7 twentieths plus 13 thirtieths. Ooh, that's a tough one. Negative 7 twentieths plus 13 thirtieths. So we need a common denominator between those two. What's the smallest number that 20 and 30 both go into? And so the answer is 60. The LCD is 60. But if that didn't jump out at you, first of all, if you used like 600, that would work too. You, you'll still get the right answer. You just have, if you don't use the lowest common denominator, you're for sure going to have to reduce your answer at the end. We still might have to reduce it even when we do use the lowest common denominator. So there's no guarantees. It's just um, if you don't use, if you used 120 by accident, you still combine them correctly, but then you'd for sure have to reduce it to get the right answer. All right. So the LCD is 60. Let's write that down twice. So we want to get 60 there and 60 there. If that didn't jump out at you, there is an algorithm, a mathematical process to find the LCD. That is, you break this down into its primes, 2 times 2 times 5, right? 4 times 5 is 20. And you break this down into its primes, um, 2 times 3 times 5, that's right, 6 times 5 is 30. And then the LCD is found by first taking what they have in common and then writing those down, but then taking all the leftovers also. All right, so 10 times 6, 60. So if it didn't jump right out at you, that's how you would find it, all right? So now we have 60. Now you go and kind of work backwards. You say, okay, I have 20 on the bottom, but I want 60 in the denominator. So what did I have to multiply that by? Well, I had to multiply it by 3. 3 times 20 is 60. That also means I have to multiply the top times 3. I have 21, because 3 thirds is 1. When I multiply by 1, I get the same thing. 17 times 1 is 17. And um, negative 7 twentieths times 1 is still equivalent to negative 7 twentieths. Now, we did a fancy one. We did 3 over 3. So it, it looks different, but these are identical. Those are the same, except I got a 60 on the bottom. Times 2, 
times two, 26. And so now do not accidentally do the 60 plus 60. That's a very common error that you get 120 on the bottom. You work to find that common denominator, leave it on the bottom, 60. The top is what changes. Negative 21 plus 26 is 5 sixtieths. And so see, even though I did everything right, even though I used the lowest common denominator, I still have to reduce. And so I end up getting uh, 112. So those fractions, those can be tricky. Let's uh, look at 31. So 31 is simplify the fraction. Oh, well, that's a refreshing little problem. So there's a trick that if you add up the digits, 1 plus 2 equal to 3, 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. When you add up the digits, if you get a number that's divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. Now, we all knew 12 was divisible by 3, but 57... That might not have jumped out at you. So I divide top and bottom by 3. That's negative 4 over 19. 19. All right. That's reduced. Negative 4 19. Don't forget the negative either. That happens a lot. 32, right? Point zero zero two as a fraction, lowest terms. Okay, so if I would have read that correctly... Nobody reads um, decimals correctly because we're based on society. So we just say 0.002. The, the right way to read that mathematically is the first place is tenths, the second place is hundredths, the third place after the decimal is thousandths, right? And then ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, right? Right? Okay. So... Tens, hundreds, thousands. If I read this correctly out loud, it's two thousands. That's how that's read. And um, so if I read it out loud, I've actually converted it to a fraction just by reading it. If um, that didn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. You put the number as a whole number on the top, and then you count however many places you'd have to move the decimal. And that's how many zeros you had after a one on the bottom. So if we had some ridiculous one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, and then a 1, and then I would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. So 9 zeros after the 1. So 7 billions. All right? Okay, so then we reduce this. 1, and then half of 1,000 is 500. So 1 five hundredths. And since you have your calculators, you can even double check that. You take 1 divided by 500, hit enter, and it'll tell you 0 0.002. All right, and then the last one. Um, oh, we're going to end with a... Oh, no. We're ending with a weird one. Sorry. So this is what's weird about it. You subtract 10 from both sides. Absolute value of 3x minus 5 is less than negative 7. So it appears that because it's an absolute value with a less than sign, it's an and problem where you would take this number and add the opposite of it on that end. But that would make zero sense. Because, look, you cannot take the absolute value of something and have it be less than zero. And this is way less than zero. This is negative 7, less than negative 7. So this is no solution. The empty set again. I really like the empty set problems with those. All right. So that is the review. Hopefully that helps you prepare for the test. Good luck studying. Contact me if you're lost.